The regulatory requirements for a new electronic product, which will just commonly be referred to as electrical certifications, can be broken down into three main areas, which I'm going to cover in this video. I also have a special bonus tip at the end of this video that I bet you've never heard before that will likely save you thousands of dollars and a lot of headaches on these certifications, so be sure to watch the full video. First, we're going to discuss emissions certifications, and this is for radio frequency electromagnetic emissions coming from your product. The main purpose of this certification is to ensure that your product doesn't interfere with other forms of wireless communication. This is typically a government requirement. For example, in the United States, it's the FCC that is in charge of emissions certifications or authorizations. Most other places in the world will have similar emissions requirements to the FCC, so I'm going to focus mostly on FCC requirements for emissions certifications. Then next we'll discuss safety certifications, and these are, as the name implies, requirements to ensure that your product is safe. For example, if your product plugs into an electrical AC outlet, then it must be certified to demonstrate that the product is safe and that it's not going to cause a fire and burn someone's house down. But there's a whole slew of safety requirements for different types of products. There are safety requirements specific for medical products, wearable devices, food products, children's toys, and so on. And then the third type of certifications are environmental regulations. And these are mainly to ensure that you're not using banned substances such as lead and that the product is properly disposed. There are also environmental certifications on how power efficient the product must be so that you're not wasting unnecessary energy, which of course impacts the environment. The first type of electrical certification that we're going to focus on is emissions certifications, or more specifically FCC certification in the United States. And even though FCC certification will only apply to the U.S., most other regions in the world, whether that be Europe, Canada, Australia, they all tend to follow the FCC requirements pretty closely. You'll still need separate authorization in those areas, but if you can meet the FCC emissions requirements, then most likely you'll be able to meet any other requirements in other countries. First of all, regardless if the product includes any wireless functionality, any product that oscillates above 9 kilohertz is going to require some level of FCC radiated emissions authorization. It's rare for a product to not have some circuit in it oscillating at at least 9 kilohertz. If your product has any type of microcontroller or microprocessor, then it's going to be oscillating most likely in the megahertz range or gigahertz range. And it's pretty unusual for a processor to run at less than 9 kilohertz, although it is possible in some rare cases. For most products, you're going to require some type of FCC authorization. When it comes to emissions certifications, there are two broad types of products. You have licensed products and you have unlicensed products. Most products are going to fall into the unlicensed category, meaning you don't require a special operator's license to use them, like you would with a ham radio, for instance. In this video, I'm going to focus strictly on unlicensed products. There are also two classes of products requiring FCC certification. There's Class A, which is for industrial products, and then there's Class B, which is for consumer products. Class B for consumer products has much stricter requirements than an industrial product because individual consumers are using it and it's not going to be in a controlled environment like a factory. So the emissions limits are going to be much lower for a consumer product than they would be for an industrial product. In the U.S. Federal Regulations document, most of these emissions requirements are specified under Section 47, but there are two subsections called Part 15 and Part 18, which you need to understand. Most products are going to fall under the requirements of Part 15, and Part 18 is specifically for products that use RF emissions to do some type of work and not just transfer information. So as long as your product is only using RF communication for information transfer, then your product is going to fall under Part 15. Going forward, I'm going to be focusing 
only on part 15 of the regulations specifically for class B consumer products. Next, we have to define two types of emissions. We have radiated emissions and conducted emissions. Radiated emissions are where electromagnetic emissions are being radiated into space, like radio, for instance. Conducted emissions are when RF energy is being passed through a conductor or a connector. For example, if your product plugs into an AC outlet, then you'll need conducted emissions certification to ensure no RF energy is being fed back into the AC line. In most cases, this is a relatively simple and cheap certification compared to radiated emission certifications. Then there are three classifications of radiated emissions. First, there is an incidental radiator, which applies to very simple products like, say, a mechanical switch or a mo motor, which should really never produce any type of EM emissions. These types of devices are very lightly regulated. Finally, we have the two radiated classifications that will impact most new electronic products. So definitely pay special attention to this section. These two types are known as intentional radiators and non-intentional radiators, and each has different certification requirements. An intentional radiator is a circuit that is intentionally radiating RF electromagnetic energy because it has some type of wireless radio whether that be Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cellular, Zigbee, it doesn't really matter as long as it has some type of wireless communication radio. Whereas a non-intentional radiator isn't purposefully trying to radiate electromagnetic energy, but instead it does it as a byproduct of its normal function. For example, if your product includes a microcontroller, but no wireless radios, then it would be considered a non-intentional radiator. The microcontroller oscillating will produce EM radiation, but not nearly as much as a circuit that does it intentionally. If your product is classified as a non-intentional radiator, then the FCC requirements are less strict, so it will be easier and cheaper to get the necessary certification. Although to be clear, the FCC only requires authorization for a non-intentional radiator, and it requires full certification for an intentional radiator. You can obtain FCC authorization for a non-intentional radiator for usually a few thousand dollars, whereas you're looking at probably over $10,000 to obtain full intentional radiator certification. Fortunately, even if your product includes wireless functionality such as Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, there's a simple way to have it classified as a non-intentional radiator so as to simplify and reduce the cost of the necessary certifications. All you need to do is to be sure to use existing modules that already have FCC certification for any wireless functionality. This will allow you to then classify your product as a non-intentional radiator, even though it has wireless functionality. Only if you design a custom radio circuit will you generally require the more expensive intentional radiator FCC certification. Now we're going to look at the various safety certifications required for different types of products in North America. The Underwriters Laboratory, or just UL for short, is going to be the main standards that you're going to have to follow in regards, in regards to safety requirements for your product. The UL is not a federal agency like the FCC, but it's a company that provides various safety standards. Unlike FCC authorization or certification, there is really no legal requirement to have your product UL certified. That being said, you don't ever want to skip out on safety regulations. First of all, retailers and any product liability insurance company is going to require that your product have UL certification. You don't want to risk injuring someone and possibly having a lawsuit filed against you. There's not just a single UL requirement, and you'll need to determine the specific UL certifications required for your product. You may have a UL standard that is for your entire product that you have to meet, but then there will also be UL standards that you'll have to, be, that you'll have to meet for individual components in your product. For instance, if using a lithium rechargeable battery, then that will require its own separate certification. There's been a lot of work in the past few years at making these more international standards. 
and a lot of the UL standards have actually been harmonized to international standards, mainly an international group of standards called IEC. And this is really helping to simplify the process of certification because it really creates a nightmare when you require various certifications in different countries, all with different requirements. One of the main types of products that will require expensive UL certification is one that plugs into an AC electrical outlet. One way around this certification, if your product really uses DC power, is to instead purchase an existing UL certified AC-DC wall adapter that you then just bundle with your product. Since your core product will only see the DC voltage coming from this certified adapter, then no special UL certification is required for your product. But if your product really uses native AC power, then there's no way around this UL certification, which is typically gonna cost you over $10,000. Now we're gonna look at environmental regulatory requirements for different areas of the world. These regulations are sort of a hodgepodge of different requirements that will vary a lot depending on where the product will be sold. The first one we're gonna look at is called Energy Star, which is a US requirement for energy efficiency in products that consume a lot of power, like appliances and televisions, heaters, and so on. Other countries have adopted similar requirements. Then another environmental certification is called the California Energy Commission. And as the name implies, this will only relate to products sold in the state of California. This certification is required for products using a battery charger to ensure it meets certain efficiency requirements. You'll find that California tends to have various other regulations that are not required in other parts of the United States. But since California has the largest economy of any U.S. state, even if you don't plan to sell it there initially, you'll likely want to eventually, so these certifications are really important to still get. There's also a patchwork of various state regulations for banned substances, and this varies from state to state. Unfortunately, there's no coherent U.S. federal regulation on this yet. ROHS is a certification standard required for products sold in Europe and in the U.S. state of California. This certification ensures that your product doesn't use banned substances like lead or mercury. There is also a separate set of requirements on the disposal of electronic products. Once again, in the U.S., there's no national standard, and it's just a patchwork of different rules from different states. Most of these environmental certifications are quite low cost and simple compared to the more complex and, ex and expensive emissions and safety certifications. Now I'm gonna share with you a final critical bonus tip that will save you a ton of money and headache on electrical certifications. In most cases, you don't need any of these certifications for performing small sales tests of a few hundred units. So you should delay these certifications as long as possible and only after you have done a sales test to validate for sure that your product will sell before you invest all this time and money into all these certifications. However, this only applies to products that are not classified as FCC intentional radiators and that don't plug directly into an AC outlet, thus requiring full UL certification. Inside my Hardware Academy program, I have a full course on certifications that go into much more detail, walking you step-by-step step through the certification process. If you like this video, be sure to check out this video here to discover 13 insider tips that will help you get your new electronic hardware product to market faster and cheaper.